So we've done a fair amount of tweaking for our web services so far with the styles and the input and output namings, as well as all these other stuff, which can figure how the whistle is going to turn out. There are a few things that I want to do in this tutorial before moving on. And uh, let me just remove all these excludes that we had uh, used before. We kind of excluded these methods to understand the whistle. I'm going to remove it and bring our web service back to its former glory. And uh, now I'm going to make a few more changes here. Let me start by improving this method, the get products. So right now, the get products method takes in a category and then returns a list of string. It's a list of product names. But I want something more. I want a bit more information about the product. Right now, I just get a name. So I'm going to create a new model object called product. I'm going to create a new model class called product, which has a bit more information about the product, like the price and all that stuff. And uh, this method is going to return a list of the product uh, objects instead of a list of strings. So I'm going to create a new Java class first. I'm going to call this product. And I'll create this in a package called model. Okay, so in this product class, I'm going to have three member variables, a name, a skew, and a price, right? So I have a string name, a string skew, and a price. And uh, I have a constructor, which takes in these three parameters and then sets it. So I don't have to create a new product and initialize it. It's going to help us when we are uh, hard coding these values. And then I have the getters and setters. Nothing too fancy, just a pojo with three member variables. So I'm going to save this. And this is the product that I'm going to return from my get products, right? Just going to return a list of these product objects. Now, before I change this, think about this for a minute. Now, let's say I have this web service deployed in production and there are a whole lot of clients who are using it. Now, if I change this value here if to a list of products instead of a list of string, what that means is the visual is going to change and all the clients have to make changes, right? They have to coordinate their changes with my deployment, right? If they happen to use the old version of their code when I deploy my new version of the code, it's going to break. So we looked at all these different annotations which kind of make sure that the visual does not change when we change our code, but something like changing the signature is obviously going to change the visual, right? There's no way around it. So what we typically do when we have these kind of changes, we create a new version. So people who want to migrate to the new version, who want to take advantage of the changes can make, uh, you know, can point to the new version. So this is something that you have to keep in mind when you think about making changes to a web service that's already been deployed. So I'm going to create a new version here. I don't want to make changes to this existing code and break all the client's code. So I'm going to copy paste this and I'm going to create a method. I'm called v2. So it's a new version, version two. And this is going to return a list of products. And I'm going to fix the import. And this one's a business service, which obviously needs to have a new version too. So I'm going to call this v2. And I will create this method. Okay, so this is my product service simple. I'm going to create a new method here. And I'm just going to create a new array list. And I'm just going to add a couple of products here. I don't want to make the whole list here. Just for illustration, I'm going to add a couple of products. So I'm going to add uh, product list of dot add new product. Let's say I write my uh, Java brains book. And uh, the skew is, let's say one, two, three, four. And I set the price to be this, whatever that is. Yes, that's how expensive my Java Brains book is. But anyway, so now I, uh, let me set another product here. Call it another book. And uh, 
this is Q A B C and the price is 50 and uh, I'm going to return the product list okay so it's complaining that the visibility of the constructor should be public I had forgotten to do that so let's do that now this should work okay i save this and uh now i'm just going to return a list of products here so what do you think happens in the visitor what do you think happens in the request and the response we knew that all along we were use we were just using strings right so we had a string category and even the inputs were all strings and the output was a string. So it just listed the strings in an XML format. But now I'm actually using a custom uh, object, right? I'm using a custom data type, which I have defined. Now, how is this gonna get translated to the XML? Now, let me just republish this without making any changes, right? And uh, we'll see how the visual turns out. Okay, so I'm gonna access the test mart catalog service because this is the name that we've given now it has created this new message with get products v2 i'm sure it would have a new operation yes there's a new operation get products v2 but what happens if we actually make a call to this now let's use the tester and uh, we'll call this get products v2 so irrespective of what i send i'm just returning a the same list so let's pass this now notice that the input is this arc zero which is books but notice what's happening in the output now the output is returning this xml structure which is actually representative of my class so my class has three member variables and it's actually providing that information over here so it has an xml element called name which has the value of the name. It has an XML element called price, which has the price and the SKU. And it's the same thing for the other book as well. So it's actually doing a conversion of my product class into XML. So the response is actually doing the conversion. So what's actually happening behind the scenes is something we're gonna to come to a bit later, but just keep this in mind. So you have a complex type and you got this XML conversion for free. You didn't have to do anything. Okay. so. This is one change that I want to do. And the next change is, let me go back to the product catalog. Now I have this service as a class, right? This is a simple Pojo class. And I put all these annotations on top of this class. Now, if I was doing this, say two years or three years back, this would probably not have worked. What was the actual specification in the earlier versions was, a web service class cannot just have these annotations on top of it. You could just not take any class, any Pojo, and then put all these annotations and you know it just magically turns into a web service. What you actually had to do is to implement an interface. And then the interface had to have all these annotations. Now let's do that now. I'm gonna create an interface out of this. I'm gonna go to refactor and extract interface. So I'm gonna create an interface. I'm gonna call this product catalog interface, which is a very bad name. You should not really have an interface here, but I'm gonna do this because I have to change the name of the class to impl otherwise. So I have this interface and I'm gonna create an interface out of all these different methods. Hit okay. Now our product catalog implements this product catalog interface and then the interface has all these methods defined. So what you would have had to do in the earlier versions is do this, create an interface, and then annotate the interface. So the class itself will not have any annotations. So let me just move this to the interface. It's gonna be all this cut and paste work, so I'm gonna speed this up a bit. Okay, so I've removed all the annotations from this class. So it's not, it doesn't have any web service annotations. 
anymore. It is just a class which implements an interface. Now the interface has all these annotations. So the interface has a web service, it has a web method, and of course I can put web methods here as well. Okay, so now we've just taken the interface out. Okay, so this was actually the standard way to do stuff before, right? Before uh, the you know the spec got changed and said, hey, now you can actually use uh, the annotations in your main class, and just one class should be enough. You don't have to implement any interface. But before that, this was the practice, and it is actually recommended to use this kind of an interface for your web service. And the reason is, again, you can achieve a kind of a decoupling. You don't have to worry about making changes here to this web service because you have isolated it out. It's similar to the concept of using interfaces in Java code, right? You create an interface and then you lock it down. So it's pretty similar to this. Just like we've used all these different annotations to lock down what's gonna show up in our Rizdil, we have actually created an interface and we are locking down the interface. So we are gonna change the implementation of these methods without having to worry about whether there was, you know, the Rizdil changes or not, right? There's one more way of decoupling the Rizdil from our actual implementation. So this interface over here that you've created and you've annotated with that web service is called the service endpoint interface. Does that name sound familiar? Yes, we had the same name for the interface that we used for the client, right? You remember when we implemented the client, we did a WS import and the WS import created stubs for us and it also created an interface that we call the service endpoint interface. And we said that is called service endpoint interface because it's an interface to the service endpoint. But this one is also called the service endpoint interface because it's an interface which is at the service endpoint. Now, you might be wondering why those two are called the same name. We're gonna talk about why it's the same name later, but for now, here's a hint. Yes, they're actually the same interface, but that's for later. For now, what we've done is we've created an interface with these annotations, and we have an implementation that is web service annotation free. It just It's just a simple class which implements an interface, but it has all the implementation for our web service. There is, however, one annotation that we need to add to this class. So we learned that this product catalog interface is the service endpoint interface. So we need to have one annotation in the actual implementation class to tell the framework what the endpoint interface is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this at web service annotation over here which was there by default, but I'm not gonna add any of the the previous annotations that we had, right? So let me import this. Now, the only property that I'm gonna add here is this one, the endpoint interface. We hadn't looked at this property so far, but I'm gonna use this now. So the endpoint interface is actually gonna tell the framework what the endpoint interface is. So we know that this is our service endpoint interface because this is the one that we have annotated with all the things that we need the Visdel to have. So I'm just gonna tell the framework that this is actually implementing all the things that this endpoint interface specifies. So I'm gonna give the class name with the complete package. So the endpoint interface is actually a string property. So it takes a string value, which is the package dot the endpoint interface name, okay? So this is the only annotation that should be uh, in the implementation. The rest of the annotations could be over here in the interface. And then uh, we can have the implementation over here. If we're using just one class without the endpoint interface, then we hide and show methods with the exclude is equal to true option of a web method that we've seen before, or make it a private, because we know that if it's a public method, it is going to get exposed as a web method. But in the case of an interface, it's only these methods that are in the interface, which is gonna get exposed as a web operation. There could be other public methods over here, which are not exposed as a web service operation. So hope that makes sense. This is uh, this is the only annotation which is required in the uh, in the implementation itself, and the rest of the stuff is moved to this endpoint interface. So in this tutorial, we learned a couple of things. We learned how we can actually use complex data types in our web service, and uh, what did we have to do for it? We had to do nothing. It just happened by default, right? We created a product 
class and uh, we sent a list of products as a response instead of a list of string and the web service framework handled it very neatly it just used the member variables as names and it created all these nice xml elements for us in the soap response and secondly we created a service endpoint interface and we had our web service class implement the interface and the interface had the web service annotations not the class itself so the advantage of doing it is you can of course decouple the interface from the implementation and let's say you want to try out multiple implementations you want to try out a radically different implementation you don't have to port over all these different annotations to that class you have consolidated it in one interface and then whatever implementation you want to use just implement this interface and you're done okay so these are some of the advantages there are a few more advantages that we'll learn down the line but i hope these advantages are clear and it's a good idea to use them thanks for watching